Hey everyone, it's Johanna. Today I'm going to share with you a tutorial on how to make the easiest mask with materials that you probably have in your house already. There's no pleats, there's no elastic. Here's how you make it. So what you need to get started is a t-shirt, your fabric rectangles, I cut mine six and a half by 11, a rotary cutter and a pair of scissors. If you don't have a rotary cutter, you can cut your strips with your scissors. You just don't want to rip. A ruler, I'm using my cutting mat and a safety pin to use to pull my straps through. And of course, a sewing machine with thread and all of your basic things to sew by machine. So that's all you need and let's get started making our masks. So how we're gonna cut our t-shirt strips is we're gonna take a t-shirt and I just took a big old t-shirt and it's been washed a bunch of times. So I know it's probably gonna not shrink at all and we know how it's gonna wash. And I'm just gonna smooth this out Kind of smooth the wrinkles out and make it easy to cut on my mat and then just to make it even easier since i don't have its big t-shirt i'm going to fold it over and i'm going to cut through four strips okay so i've smoothed out the wrinkles and i'm going to take my ruler now, if you're more comfortable marking with a marking pencil, you can do that. Let me straighten this up here. Whatever the best way that you like to cut is gonna work. Um, I'm gonna cut my hem off here because we don't need to use that. So I'm cutting with, oops, I guess I'm cutting through the hem. Oh, yes I am. Okay, that's not good. If you cut through where the, see how much easier it is when you don't cut through the surged piece. Okay, so I'm just gonna throw that away. And then I'm going to cut about a, one and a quarter inches wide. And you, I can turn this if I wanna measure, you can eyeball it, it really doesn't matter the exact amount. And I'm just gonna cut some strips. So, there's one. And there's another. I'm cutting at the store and we need a new mat. Mats don't last forever and neither do rotary blades. Okay, I'm just gonna cut a few just to give you, just to show you. So now I have this nice big tube and I'm gonna cut one end. Doesn't matter where because it's a big tube. So I'm just gonna cut. So now I have one big strip. And all I'm gonna do is just give this a tug. And I am making a great strong cord that I'm gonna use for my straps. And this is going to wash really nicely. So I'm gonna do this. And that's it. I have my cord. I'm taking my two rectangles and I'm using batiks because batiks have the tightest weave of all the fabrics. So I've cut my rectangles six and a half by 11. And of course it's wider than the other masks. Um, it's wider than the other mask patterns because we're actually gonna make this casing. So we're gonna be taking it and, and folding it in onto itself. So I'm gonna take these two and I'm gonna put them right sides together. And yes, batiks have a right side, but it's really hard to tell and it's really not gonna matter for these purposes. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna sew. I'm sewing a quarter inch all the way around and then I'm going to turn it. Uh, sometimes if you have bigger seam allowances, you can just clip your corners so that they turn out nicely. I'm gonna turn it and then I'm gonna top stitch. And I usually just top stitch maybe an eighth of an inch all the way around. And so I'm just gonna have a rectangle. When I'm done, I'm gonna turn them down because I'm press it. And so 
seams down here, and then that's gonna be my mask. Okay, I am going to sew these two pieces right sides together. And I have some different pieces just so I can demo. I'm gonna backstitch at the beginning and end because I am going to be turning it. You can use a pin if you want to hold it together or not. I'm using a quarter inch seam allowance. there's about a two inch space for turning and back stitch because what that's going to allow me to do is turn it not strain any of the stitches so I'm going to go ahead wait, and turn this if you can clip your corners if you'd like mm -hmm. there's no interfacing on this so it's pretty easy to turn and because I've backstitched I don't have to worry about ripping any of my stitches out. I'm going to poke my corners nicely. You can use a little turner if you'd like or a little chopstick or something. I'm just going to use my fingers. If my corners are not perfect perfect I'm okay with that. Do them a little rounded. Okay. I'm going to make sure that the area that I turned my edges under, the, the edges are tucked in. I'm going to give it a quick press with the iron. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to top stitch. Make sure this is tucked under here. Okay. And I'm just going to do a top stitch all the way around. And I'll start over here. You can do whichever side you want on the outside and inside. One of the recommendations for the masks is to have contrasting fabric so that you know which side was the side on the outside and which was on the inside, really for cleanliness purposes. I just grabbed my ruler and I'm going to turn my edges over. So here is my finished top stitch rectangle. Really, really easy to do. No straining on your machine. We didn't hear any groans. We didn't break any needles. And I'm going to just turn my edges over. I'm using a ruler, but you don't have to. You can eyeball it. And I'm just going to finger press it or maybe I'll even just hit it with the iron. I'll do that on both sides and I'm just maybe going to eyeball it. So I'm turning it here under one inch. If it's not exactly an inch, if it's a little more over or a little more under, that's okay as long as you have a nice way to um, enclose your casings. Now I'm going to sew just a seam along the edge here and along this other edge and making my casings. So I'm just going to sew. I'm also going to back stitch uh, because we're going to get some wear and tear. We're going to be using the mask. We're going to be gathering it with our cording. So I want to make sure that I make those ends secure. Do the other side. Back 
back stitching both ends I'm kind of going over the stitching I just did there's no real need for seam allowance as long as you really have your as long as you really have your stitches solid I'm using a 50 weight thread and here we go so I now have this rectangle it's nice and soft still, but it's two layers of batik. And this is gonna be my inside, this is gonna be my outside, and I have these nice casings. Okay. All right, I showed you earlier how to cut your strips for your t-shirt strips. So when we cut it, we had these nice long pieces. So when we cut, we cut the t-shirt, we cut the strips at one and a quarter, and we have these nice long pieces here. So I'm going to snip and give it a tug. So I'm gonna have a long piece, and when I give it a tug, I make these nice cords. And I'm making the length, the width of the t-shirt, but you can cut this as small as you want. You can even cut it after. I'm not sewing these, I'm just gonna tie some knots at the end. So totally adjustable. So this is how easy it is to assemble this mask. I'm going to take my cording, let's use this new orange one, and I'm gonna take my safety pin and I'm going to put, put it through the end like so. And I'm just using this as a way to fish it through the channels that I'm, we made. So I'm gonna go in one end and just kind of feed it through like so. Can you see how I'm doing this? I think we learned how to do this in Girl Scouts or Bluebirds, but really, really easy. You just kind of smush it and then it will come out the other end and just pull it through and then just come down, go down into the other channel like so, feed it through. And that is it. No more sewing, no more cutting, that's it. So I'm going to tie, I'm going to tie a knot. I'm not going to trim these yet. I'm going to tie a knot on either end. You can make a nice, neat knot. And if I wanted to make this smaller, I could just, I'll take your pin out. I could just trim it and cut it to size. So what I like about this mask is it's completely adjustable. This is one that I made the other day and I put it in the washing machine and I put it in the dryer and just like this, and this is how it came out. And while a purist might wanna take an iron to it, I was able to wear this. I mean, you're, you're, you're gonna be gathering it anyways, but you can put this in the washing machine and it doesn't lose any of the integrity in your stitching, in your batiks, in your cords. It came out as good as new. So what I like about this is I'm now gonna put this over my head and you can either put it with the ties going on the bottom or you could go make it go the other way, but I have, I like to wear it over my ears, but however you like it. So I'm gonna bring this around and tie it. And as I pull it, can you see this? The sides are gathering. I'm gonna to try to talk with my mask on. Okay, so it's now here and I can adjust it here. I can put this over my ears if I want and that will help hold it up because I have a small face. But if you can see, I have comfort. I have no gaps here. It's covering here. So this mask is really doing the trick and it's washable and it's easy and it's not stressing your sewing machine, which is, one of the biggest frustrations that everybody seems to be having when they're trying to make masks. So basic straight sewing is all you need and uh, it's, it's fun and easy. And I'm sure everybody has an old t-shirt around. So you don't have to buy a new jersey, you could just upcycle a t-shirt. Okay, so that is my tutorial for my SOS mask, Save Our Sewing Machines. And if you have any questions, please reach out and ask or leave a comment. If you need boutiques for these masks, you can always visit the Stitchcraft website, that's stitchcraft.com, or give us a call at the shop. And we're always happy to help. We'll have a PDF that you can print out with the directions if you need it. And I hope that everybody stays safe, be well, and wear your mask. Make time to make something and 
We'll see you here soon. Bye. Mm-hmm.